Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining our session, Digital Data Center Operations Make Data Centers More, more Sustainable. This is the fourth webinar in our Data Center Sustainability Series. My name is Carolina Rappelinstedt, and I'm today's moderator. Before we begin, let me highlight some features of this webinar platform. There is a Q&A panel to the right of the slides. During the presentation, you can submit questions at any time by entering them here. Our speaker will address as many as possible at the end of the presentation. You will receive an email later this week with a recording of this presentation and a copy of the presentation materials. This, is, this five part series covers sustainability trends and innovative technologies that support reliable data center operations while consciously managing environmental impact. Upcoming sessions will run in two week intervals through the middle of June. You can find this registration link to sign up for the remaining webinars in the reminder email you received for this session. Your speaker today is Arthur Lind, Business Manager Data Center Automation for the Europe region at ABB. Now I will turn it over to Arthur. Especially data center automation solutions uh, in ABB in, in the European region. And uh, today we are going to talk about uh, uh, how digital data center operations can make data centers uh, to be more sustainable. Uh, the agenda for today is uh, I will give you an introduction to data center automation and digital data center operations. And we will look into five different control strategies for data centers, how uh, these strategies can help you to make your data centers to be more efficient and sustainable. In the end, I will give you a short summary of the presentation. And then, as Carolina said, there will be a Q&A session in the end. So, so please ask questions in the Q&A part of, of, of this uh, webinar. As background, uh, digital data center operations uh, is about uh, very much about uh, the automation possibilities. And um, you who have uh, visited ABB website, you can find you have found uh, maybe this um, interactive presentation where you can click at different parts uh, in in this presentation. And um, the part we are covering today is about ABB Ability Data Center Automation and ABB Ability Energy Management. So these parts in the red circle, this you can find on, also on our website. Uh, when it comes to uh, these kind of solutions, um, we from ABB think that there is a lot of learning you can do from other industries um, so looking into solutions in, in, in many other industries, uh, how this has been made during the latest decades is that all the these kind of automation solutions and, and process of op operation optimizations and, and energy savings, these are very much based on, on having a highly available infrastructure. Uh, it goes more and more about integrating things and, and being able to access things from, from one environment, one maybe one system, and having them integrated together to share data and, and use this data for the process of uh, optimizations. This also creates a super efficient operation environment, and, and you can optimize the complete operation in, in these kind of facilities, as well as there is a high requirement on, on, on high secure and security in these environments. When it comes to data center automation, we think that uh, uh, these kind of industrial controlled applications and implementation can also be beneficial in the data center industry. 
So in, in our data center automation solutions, we have uh, solutions where we can control, monitor, and optimize the mission critical infrastructure in a data center. And this is uh, on, for example, the mechanical side, the BMS part, building management systems, very much about the cooling, for example. It is as well on the electrical part, the electrical power management systems. It's around SCADA system. It's around DCIM, data center infrastructure management capabilities. And all these capabilities, we have the possibility to provide in one single industrial solution. Many data centers today, looking into them, uh, there are in, in data centers many different parts, and, and very often the implementations are made in a way of silos. This means that you have different systems taking care of different parts. So for example, on the, on the electrical side, you have EPMS system taking care of the switch gears, UPSs, generators, et cetera, so all the kind of electrical equipment that is monitored and maybe controlled through, through one or maybe some systems around the EPMS part. Then you, may, you might have other systems, for example, SCADA systems around substation part. You might have battery monitoring systems. You might have one or several systems around the building management part, taking care of the cooling equipment like cracks, air flows, chillers, pressure transmitters, etc. Then you can have systems around the DCIM part taking care of the IT assets, servers, racks, network devices, etc. And you might have systems in, in the white space area taking care of lighting systems, security systems, leak detection systems, and other parts. And having a solution based on this kind of silo thinking, it creates, uh, first of all, it's, it's very costly to build because you have to implement different systems. So you have, to, very often you have to deal with different vendors. And, and in the end, it will be very inefficient to operate because uh, to, to optimize the operation is very much about also being able to share data between the different parts and you can optimize in, in total. And, and having different systems from different vendors is, is uh, more or less impossible to do this data sharing. Uh, we think that uh, there is a solution around this where you can eliminate this silo thinking. So by more integrating things into uh, one system or uh, one data repository, uh, in this repository you can exchange data between the different parts, you can stop optimizing, you can monitor different parts, you can do, do full reporting on all the assets you have in, in your facility and, and uh, you can operate from more, more of one environment as well as handling the asset management and maintenance management from, from one part. And uh, this, this gives you a total oversight of your operations and, and you can able your, to optimize the full operation of, of your data center. And uh, this kind of concept, this has been ongoing. In, if you look into other industries, this has been go ongoing the latest, latest decades, where more and more of uh, the operation of industrial application in, in many, many business areas have, the trend has been that more and more integration of things. So there, there is thinking of one system to manage the facility instead of having multiple systems. And, and this kind of uh, solution creates a more robust and secure solution that you can really trust and you can start optimizing. And the optimization can also be applied by having controllers to manage and optimize operations. And, and th these controllers can apply simple or advanced control logic to, to automate the, the, the control of your facility. So this was a kind of introduction to, to the area. And now, now I am intend to pre present uh, some different ideas how you can use this kind of thinking in, in uh, optimizing and, and making your data centers more sustainable. The first strategy is about open loop control. And the open loop control, the goal with this is that you, you want to monitor 
how your data center is behaving. You look into problems, problem areas, for example, hotspots, load imbalances, and, and uh, by this you can uh, identify uh, problems and you can make, if, if possible, you can make manual corrections around this. So areas of concern are, for example, poor airflow containments, old inefficient servers, transient conditions, and uh, by identifying these, you can you can take actions where you can make it more efficient, hopefully. And, and uh, very often the the efficiency shows up in and that you make energy savings, with, which optimize your cost and of course give you a better carbon footprint in in your operation. It can also enable new business models in some cases that you can find out solutions that you can apply in in business models out of knowing how your data center is behaving. We have one example we have implemented for a customer, Lakeland. Uh, Lakeland is uh, a community college data center and it's built for sustainability and flexibility. It is a small data center for regional community college and in through the uh, implementation we have made with the client they have improved the visibility and regular reporting and, and this implementation by just knowing and having visibility the customer was able to re reduce the energy uses by 53%. Of course this was this are a high number uh, it, this is a very high number but they, they have a really bad situation when when this before this started and, and they, they had no grip on, on where they had the problem by, but uh, by creating this visibility they, they really could take action on, on, on the most important part. And these were among other, uh, they, they're looking into temperature profiles so they could quickly identify airflow issues. Uh, they could uh, take uh, by real-time visualizations and they could take uh, actions on, on transient, identifying transient, identifying transient problems uh, around, very much around the airflow issues. And um, they got also better access to, to insights with the data and, and uh, by this they could also easily calculate the return of investment on, on every measurement they would like to take. As an added benefit out of the solution, they also could apply that uh, the problem was more quickly identified and, and uh, this has led uh, to a higher uptime. So they are very near 100% uptime on their data center today. Um, other examples where you can apply this open control uh, strategy, uh, you can look at, for example, the IT asset management, uh, where you can measure power consumption and looking into temperature profiles. And by this, you can, for example, look uh, for servers that are too densely spaced. This normally creates hotspots. If you look into and, and find servers too loosely spaced, this normally gives you very inefficient way of cooling. And if you have too many servers on a circuit, this normally give you load concerns. Identifying and taking care of these kinds of problems can be managed by applying uh, DCIM tools, data center infrastructure management tools, and, and, uh, and handling all these IT assets uh, in a more efficient way. And, and we have uh, around this DCIM capability, we have solutions in our, our data system data center automation system as well. Um, there is also a kind of trend um, in the market that, um, that especially collocation providers, they want to track power consumption by tenant. And by this, they, they implement an, like an IT chargeback. Uh, and, and having this facility, of course, the, the energy is a, is a very big cost for, for data center operators and, and uh, if you can also apply the, this cost to, to be shown for the for the clients or tenants, uh, it, it normally creates a pressure that you, you, you want to optimize the energy consumption. So IT chargeback uh, is, is a way where you, or something you can achieve about 
from from monitoring in a better way the energy consumption. Uh, jumping into the next strategy, which is about closed loop, uh, this is more of active control. And the goal here is that you uh, want to operate and, and optimize with uh, with the control function, automatic control functions. So what you do is that you uh, apply algorithms into controllers, and and these algorithms uh, is very much about uh, uh, optimizing energy consumption and, and water consumption. Uh, these algorithms can be simple. It can be, for example, PID controllers, or you can apply more complex algorithms like machine learning or model predictive control. So by al applying these uh, control functions, the system can adjust to changing loads and environment conditions, and, and this will will uh, save you on, on the energy side and water side and, and uh, minimize the cost and, and, and giving you a better carbon footprint. Looking into more details of this, um, first of all, this is very often used in, in controlling uh, for um, the lower energy or water usage uh, optimization. And, and this kind of uh, strategy can be applied, applied to a single unit or you can apply it to, to a, an area uh, or even a system-based implementation. So maybe in some cases across the entire data center. So you have a controller function where you apply this algorithm in some way and, and this algorithm gets a set point or some set points and, and you have measured values from the process. And, and um, the, the controller algorithm will give you a controller output that, that make your, for example, your cooling to be optimized based on, on the conditions in, in your data center or, or, or in, the, in the equipment. And you can take into account and incorporate also other inputs like uh, load predictions, weather forecasts, and, and uh, look into power consumptions that can be as feedback into this controller algorithm. In um, <clears throat> quite many data centers today, uh, the operators apply these kind of uh, functions, uh, especially in the in, in trying to 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 achieve a better energy savings around uh, by by rise, raising the inlet temperatures, which can save you energy in 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 your operation of your data center. But there is one problem around applying just the, the raise of the temperatures that this normally also give you um, higher uh, uh, load on, on the servers that the servers need to have, the, the fan speed fan speed needs to be faster so, and, and the, the fans consume quite a lot of power in, in the servers. So by just applying the temperature raise, you don't get the full fee, full benefit of, of uh, the optimization. But if you can apply also a feedback from the servers and, and uh, looking into consumption in the servers on the power side, and the control algorithm can also take take this into account, applying these controller algorithms, then then you can find maybe the warmer temperature within co given constraints where minimum power is consumed. And, and uh, if you're looking into an ASHRAE diagram around this, you, 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 you have the possibility to find this optimized area where you can make, make it even more, let's say, optimized. And of course, this is only possible when you have a unified system where you have all the data available. So you have all the servers integrated together with, with the facility control of, of, of the cooling part. One uh, quite famous example is, is what Google do in this area. They have this DeepMind uh, solution. And uh, Google has been able to, to uh, uh, reduce the energy consumption by around 40%. So 
So they are applying these kind of machine learning algorithms uh, that can optimize their data centers. And, and uh, by this, they, they are improving the PUE. Uh, and, and here you, in the diagrams, you see uh, how you improve your PUE when, when you apply these machine learning control algorithms. And as soon as these are turned off, you can also see that you raise the PUE value. Then I want to jump into the uh, third strategy, uh, how you can ma make it, your data centers more sustainable. And this is about extending the facility, not just looking into the data center itself, but seeing the data center as, as part of an extended infrastructure. The goal here is to, to take advantage of uh, site or regional opportunities where you can redirect your waste heat for further use in, in the community. Uh, you can also use on-site power generation capabilities. This is typically if you, if you have renewables uh, to, to apply to your data center. And then you can reduce the utility demand. So um, the benefits here is that you can do cost savings. Maybe you will not see this in, in, in the PUE value of the data center, but looking into the total solution, you, you can do cost savings and you can also reduce the demands on the, on the grid. We have uh, applied these kind of solutions for, for example, Ericsson in Sweden, where we have a solution taking care of uh, the building management, power management and energy management in, in the data center. But the data center itself is also connected to the community where they can, uh, the, the cooling system that, that provides heat and hot water, to, these can also be used by the local residents. So warming up, for example, uh, buildings and so on. So they have a connection to the, uh, to the um, overall system in, in the community and can use this uh, extended uh, waste heat to, to heat uh, buildings and so on. The fourth strategy is about energy market options. Um, here the goal is that you have the, if you have the possibility to, to work together with local electric, electrical utility companies, uh, then you can participate in, in interactive or incentive programs as, uh, such as demand response. And uh, the aim is that you, you want to take advantage of energy hot spot market prices and uh, uh, you want to leverage on-site on generation capabilities uh, where you can do internal load shaving options. The benefits out of this is that they can reduce the price uh, of the electricity so it's, it's cost optimization it is all about and uh, you can also allow grid operators to be better plan and manage the peaks. So um, you, they can maybe use a better energy um, source than, than, for example, carbon heavy uh, generation if they can plan and manage the, the, the uh, source of, of the energy to the data center. And in this area uh, from ABB we have, we have systems and tools that can help to apply these kind of solutions. We have something called ABB Ability Energy Manager and, and uh, this system and the tools can, can help you to identify uh, the exchange of energy, energy between the, the utility and the data center. So you can, with the tools you can uh, spot low prices on the energy you can purchase from the market when it's right time to do it and then you can for, for if you have battery capacity you can charge batteries when the, the price on the on the electricity is low and, and maybe you can also in a full integrated system you can control the capacity utilization when the high the price is high on the spot market you can sell to the markets you can for example discharge your batteries you can run on generators and, and you can minimize the utilization in your data center 
So uh, this gives you a chance to, to act on, on the demand side uh, and, and uh, considering the response and, and regulate uh, the grid, grid uh, connection with, with the help of these tools. So to do this, you need to exploit the load management capabilities, uh, on-site generation, you need to look into excess energy storage, maybe looking into temperature headrooms and, and also looking into load sharing capabilities of, for example, non-critical IT loads. The purpose of this energy optimization is that you want to utilize energy price volatility and, and uh, uh, use um, a process that flexible, in a flexible way minimize the energy costs. Uh, you want to take care of peak shaving and load shedding. You, want, you need to have some kind of own generation or energy procurement tools uh, with which this, this ABB ability and energy management can take care of. And, and uh, uh, by this, the features you can get out of this, that you can get the cost efficiency in, in the energy portfolio. You can optimize your cost of generation of the energy. You can look even into energy forecasts. Uh, maybe you can shift consumption from off to, to off peak hours, and, and you can optimize the operating costs. The system supports also multiple scenarios where you can look into different type, kind of energy types, uh, including the electricity or natural gas. Even if, if you have applied all these kind of things I'm, I'm been mentioning here, what can you then do more? Uh, then you need to go, let's say, beyond the PUE lim limits and, and this you can only do by focusing on the IT part. And if you look into a data center, generally speaking, the IT part is about 50% of the energy consumption. And uh, looking specific, specifically into the servers, the servers themselves, they have a kind of area where, where looking into the load contra the power consumption there is an area where the servers are more efficient you can maximize the efficiency in the servers by having the right load balance in, 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 the, in the servers and working with these kind of uh, ideas then you, you can you can uh, do even more energy savings where you can uh, find the the optimal part where you can uh, load your servers in this area where you, where you use them in the best way. You don't get a lot of this waste power, uh, but you use the, the, the servers for, for what they are intending to be used for. And um, having this in mind, if you want to make this uh, as a full complete solution, then, then you normally, do normally need also an integrated IT and facility control system and uh, this can be, in the end, can be driven to, to optimize your energy usage and, 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 and by this cost. Uh, also looking into these kind of trends like, like edge data centers that they are, the proliferation of these small light out data centers, they, they can also be incorporated into these kind of solutions. Uh, to, to be taken into account is also the, the high growth in, in, uh, in uh, IoT and 5G kind of type of solutions, that, that those can also be incorporated into these kind of solutions. And you're, we, we see also a trend where you, you, you need more data centers as a service, and, and these kind of data centers be more, will be more uh, managed by software that you, you can make your data centers um, more, the control of the data center is reliable, more, more based on software solutions. And this jumps us into the fifth control strategy, which, which we call cyber physical control. Here you have a totally integrated facility and IT controls. The goal here is to control, monitor, and optimize the data center as one single system that you can manage all the elements and, and uh, uh, impact operations, uh, including cooling and IT load allocation. 
The benefit out of this is that you can get a fully optimized uh, solution for energy and performance, and, and also that you, you normally get increased reliability. If to do this, um, you, you, you need to incorporate some kind of integration between the facility control, which, which is about controlling the cooling and the power and the infrastructure with the IT resource, or there is normally in data center some kind of dispatch system that looks into IT resources, how they are used, so how, how you allocate your servers, and etc. And, and to optimize the full solution, then you need some kind of integration between the facility control and the IT resource management. Uh, by having this, you can consolidate IT load for maximum server efficiency, and you can also take care of the cooling load and, and, and control this to be optimized need to, for the need for the servers. Uh, with a full solution, you can adjust the IT loads, and, and you can also maybe incorporate weather conditions and energy pricing information into the complete solution. And, and this can be applied for one data center, but there is also possibility to apply this to, to a fleet control. So, so maybe you have a, a, a over a, a control where you can control more several data centers from 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 a, a central system. An example on the, in this area is uh, the Facebook Autoscale project, where Facebook has been able to reduce uh, the energy. Uh, energy they have been being able to save on the energy. So looking into this blue curve during a, a, a 24 hour cycle, they 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 could save about 10 to 15 percent on, on the energy. And this was due to that they 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 can create load balancing technology that they use. Uh, control theory to maximize the energy and and, uh, and, and uh, uh, energy savings and minimize the performance uh, impact. And this is by doing uh, uh, reloading the, the server request to smaller number of servers and, and you can use the servers in a more medium to high load. So you, uh, you, you don't run servers in, on small loads and, and the unused servers are put in idle mode. Though Facebook has not used the powering down the servers, if they have done this, they, they could even make even bigger savings. But, uh, but they, they have been redirecting, the, the, let's say, the load to, to, to servers and using them on medium and high load. And, and by this, they could do these kind of serving, savings. Uh, another possibility in this area is that you can follow, apply the follow the, by moon uh, thinking, and, and uh, this is uh, very much in, in the area of, um, of uh, that the energy uh, price follow the moon principle. Uh, so this can be applied if you have uh, data centers uh, in different uh, regions, and, and uh, you can use different energy market prices uh, from the utilities so if you can re load load can be if load can be shifted to different areas or different data centers then you you can operate on on the area where, where the power cost is, is lowest other examples where you can use this kind of uh, uh, control strategies is uh, power capping. Uh, so this is about uh, dynamically adjusting the performance of servers. Very much what what uh, actually Facebook is doing. You can do time shifting, for example, in the as an example, this uh, follow by moon principle, and then uh, demand response. You can load your shifting to other data centers, uh, you can shut down your non-critical IT dose and, and use this power capping method. And, and uh, if you also apply weather forecasting, you, you can 
anticipate uh, peak utility loads and and, uh, and uh, curtail, apply curtailment requests in, into your solutions. So uh, by this, I have presented, uh, let's say, five strategies uh, what, which can make your data centers to be more efficient and, and sustainable. And the summary takeaway of, of uh, the presentation is, first of all, that uh, by having a comprehensive overview of your data center, this is the critical starting point to make sustainable solutions. You need to know where you are. You need to monitor how you're behaving. And, and if you know this, then you can start applying uh, your, your optimization algorithms. And the first of all you, 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 you can do is the open loop strategy, where you, you can take more or less manual actions to, to, to apply improvements on, on the areas you have identified as problems. The next possibility is uh, applying a closing loop mechanism where you more automatically control your operations and, and the automatic functions can, can then, then optimize your operation automatically. And um, the benefit of applying a, a, a unified data center automation system already at construction time, this, this can be uh, beneficial from, from a cost-effective way to prepare for the future sustainable, sustainability initiatives. And, and this is regardless of the level of sophistication, because with a fully integrated system, you have all the data available, and then you can monitor your, where, where you have your problems, and then you have no constraints how you can apply and which kind of strategies you, you want to apply. So the future of the data center is unified and optimized solutions. And, and this is really a need we can see, because data centers is a very big consumer of the energy. In, in, in the world. If you want to have uh, more reading, we have in the presentation listed some links as background information to the presentation. So here are some links to publicly available research material and some white papers. So, so uh, the links should be av available through the presentation sent out to you. If you want to know more about ABB data center automation solutions, we have a website uh, where you can find information, for example, brochures, data sheets, and other kind of white papers and solution uh, series solutions uh, that are presented on this site. So this was uh, my presentation, and uh, now now we are um, open for for taking the questions. Thank you, Arto. Uh, so uh, this concludes the presentation portion of our webinar, and Arto will now answer a few questions uh, we received during our session. Uh, so if you would like to ask a question, you can still enter it into the Q&A section, and we will answer as many as we have time for today. Uh, the first question we have for Arto is, how many of these types of automation systems has EBB deployed? Uh, for the ABB Ability Data Center Automation Solution, we have today uh, more than 80, 80 implementations globally. Um, of course, not all these implementations are applying all these control strategies, uh, but, but we, for the system itself, we have more than 80 implementations today. Thank you. And uh, we also have another question. Uh, has ABB deployed any of the automated energy management systems? Um, we have implemented not all these strategies, but I, I presented in the presentation some examples, for example, this energy and lakeland and so on. So in different cases, we have, we have implemented different kind of strategies. Uh, so far, I have not seen that we have, let's say, this fully integrated uh, IT and, and facility operations that we really bring all these things together. Uh, but 
we have definitely the possibility to integrate these parts because the system itself has open interfaces to both the IT part and, and the facility part. Thank you. And uh, another question. Uh, does ABB have any interfaces to resource management systems or have they done any systems like what was described? Yeah, we, we have interfaces to the IT part, as which I mentioned. We, we can integrate the IT parts. Uh, for example, that there is an integration to Intel-based servers, and, and many servers are Intel-based, and, and we, we have an integration to the IT part through, through this Intel integration. And, and uh, then, then the system, uh, in many cases, we are applying the system into the facility part, uh, the building management and the energy management part, and, and all these parts can be incorporated and integrated into one solution where you can you can really apply this full scheme. All these strategies I have presented can be applied in the system. But so far we don't have any customer case where we have implemented the full strategy with with the full integration of IT optimization and, and the facility operations. Thank you. And we also have another question. Uh, you say the future is integrated, unified, all-in-one solution. What about standard modular approach, best of breed versus the fully unified one? Um, I, I, I see the trend that uh, modular solution is, is a growing area in, in data centers, and I can understand this, but still, Still, these modular solutions to have the full optimized operations, they need to be, at least in my mind, they need to be in some way integrated together to, to, to not having this kind of silo thinking, which I mentioned in the presentation. You cannot, you cannot optimize the full data center by just applying, let's say, sub-optimization sub on some part. To have the full optimization, you need to integrate these different parts into to more full management operations. And, and of course, these modular solutions, they can be integrated into the full, full uh, integrated solution by having them connected to the, to the full system. Thank you, Arto. And uh, that's all the time we have for today. So when you exit this session, you will be prompted to fill out a survey. Uh, we appreciate any feedback you have on today's event. Uh, thank you for joining. We hope to see you in a couple of weeks for our Service Strategies for Sustainability webinar.